I finally found the setup. This is great. This is great. This is what I want. Coffee. Guess what I got for you today? More French authors. Plus plus Francaise. Toujours. Tout le monde. Bonjour. Bienvenue à Better Than Food. Welcome to Better Than Food Book Reviews. How are you today? I'm your host, Cliff Sargent, and I have some awesome shit for you today. Come here. Come here. All right. Fine. Oh. All right, so metaphor time. Imagine that you have gone to a cafe or bar and you are sitting and you are ordering a glass of red wine. Imagine you are going... <laughs> this cat hates me. <laughs> Ugh. Fucking... I try and make you famous and look how grateful you are. Son of a bitch. <clears throat> so imagine you go into a cafe or a bar and you order a glass of red wine Just like a house red, nothing fancy. Something like totally affordable. You know it's gonna be good, you're expecting something nice. Um, and the owner comes up to you and says, actually we're all out of that, but instead here we have this bottle of 30 year old scotch for you. Sets it right down in front of you. Now that never happens, but that is basically the metaphorical equivalent to how I felt with this book. I say, oh, against nature, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pick this up and it's probably gonna be fine. I'm gonna enjoy it. Fucking <laughs> good. And uh, you know, no, no qualms. It's probably gonna be fine. Um, it turned out to be one of the greatest fucking things I've ever read. Joris Carl Wiesmont, Against Nature. Mm, God, it's good. Oh my god. This book is better than food. It's better than books. And this book even dedicates a portion of itself to books that the author thought were the greatest in the world. So, it's almost as good as sex in general. And it's way better than a lot of sex that I have had. Hashtag sorry not sorry. I fucking love Wiesmont. I should have I should have called it. Somebody, I mean, how could I not? Um, this book is really not about anything in particular, but about a lot of things being experienced. Things specifically belonging to a French effeminate aristocrat, kind of like the last of his lineage, sort of like anemic, emaciated individual who locks himself away in his quarters, determined to create a world within, entertained only by his exotic, rare, profoundly sophisticated material possessions. Including but not limited to paintings, books, teas, flowers, jewelry, religious music, and ruminating, almost like Proustian style, on the conjured anecdotes that they inspire from his, from his life. My first thought as I'm trying to sell this idea is that this really pitches horribly, but I assure you, even though it is just a book about things, it's there's so much life in it. It perfectly represents the desire to lock yourself away, uh, away from humanity and focus on your interior life. Feel lonely by your passions and your possessions out of true boredom with the unrelenting sea of stupidity right outside your door of everyday life and people. But of course, with the conflicting cemented fact that you as a human being are a social creature and are only recognized as a human being through other human beings. And of course, the anguish, the ennui, the boredom, the mental despair, uh, and the hopelessness that follow. The truly fascinating part about this is that Wiesmont, 20 years after writing Against Nature, uh, wrote a preface for it, which is included in this edition. The crazy thing about this is that Huismont actually became a Catholic after coming off as a very devout atheist in this book, you know, in everything. A pessimistic atheist who was obsessed with Schopenhauer. I mean, you know, a real true blue pessimist, a real Lagosian. Um, and, you know, does a damn, and does a damn fine job. I mean, he was 
He was quite serious about becoming a Catholic. I mean, he even went and spent like years, I think, in a monastery, you know, kind of like in religious seclusion or something, something akin to that. But uh, uh, so he believed that what was fascinating is that he believed that Schopenhauer and the Bible basically started in the exact same place, right? Schopenhauer's brand of pessimism was really not all that different from what they were saying in the Bible. That being said, he believed that uh, the philosopher decided to do nothing about it while the Christian decided to try and take action. Which is fascinating. I'm certainly not sold on Huizmol's reasons for becoming a Catholic. I mean, he doesn't especially give any truly insightful evidence for why that is particularly um, better other than it, it gives you some sort of answers even if they're fake, you know, I mean, really, you know. I can't tell if he's actually still skeptical of his own conclusions and Christianity, but he is sort of trying to work through it somehow in the end of his life. I'm not going to spoil it for you. There's just far too many anecdotes about that, and it's incredibly fascinating. Um, you have to read this fucking book. You have to read this fucking book. I don't know if it's just the point of time in my life, uh, being somebody in his mid-twenties going through some crazy shit who is fascinated by pessimism. I don't know if it's just my affinity for French, dark French authors, whatever, you know. Um, but this is, uh, this is great literature. This is just leaps off the fucking page. It seems timeless. It seems like it could have been written, you know, far more recent than it actually was. Um, Yeah, way better than food. One more quick anecdote, one more quick anecdote before I leave. Um, Rizmont is the subject of interest for the protagonist of Michel Welbeck's new novel, Submission. Um, I think he's a, a, a professor of literature who's actually studied a lot of Rizmont. And I'm very, 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 very eager to read Submission. Um, I don't I don't speak French, but I've actually been trying to, to learn and read in it because I because I'm, I'm extremely impatient the, the translation is not going to come out in English for at least another six months at least um, so So there you have that that connection <laughs> Absolutely fascinated eager to know more and for the meantime, please read this novel of absolute and total decadence That being said Please remember what Mr. John Waters said. If you go home with somebody and they don't have any books, don't fuck them. And if they have Wiesmall, consider marriage. Okay. Have a great day, guys. More soon. Take care. Bye.